we've got an escalation in the war between Tucker Carlson and his former employer, Fox News. As you guys know, uh, Tucker launched his new show on Twitter uh, this week with, uh, I guess, roughly 10 minute monologue. And this is no surprise, but it is a major development. Put this up on the screen. Fox News has officially informed Tucker that he is in breach of his contract. Um, you know, all of these media contracts come with non-compete clauses, which I think should be illegal. And the Biden administration agrees yep. with us that they should be illegal. Biden and Tucker teaming up on this, the horseshoe no one expected. Um, but let me just read you a little bit of this report. They say on Wednesday, Fox News notified Tucker's lawyers that the former primetime anchor violated his contract with the network when he launched his own Twitter show on Tuesday, according to a copy of a letter obtained by Axios. Um, Carlson's lawyers told Axios any legal action by Fox would violate violate his First Amendment rights. Carlson, Axios reported, has since accused Fox of fraud, has argued Fox breached his contract when its senior executives reneged on promises made to Carlson, quote, intentionally and with reckless disregard for the truth. Apparently, Sagar, part of the dispute here revolves around how the Dominion settlement ended. Mm -hmm. So apparently... There are reports, and I think Axios is one of the outlets that reported, that as part of the settlement agreement, Tucker, they had a, a verbal commitment that Fox News would let Tucker go. And that a big part of the reason he was pushed out was because this was a handshake agreement within the Dominion settlement. Now, Carlson apparently had extracted a promise from Fox not to settle with Dominion voting systems, quote, in a way which would indicate wrongdoing on the part of himself. And so he clearly views, you know, the fact that these reports came out, the fact that he was let go, allegedly, reportedly, as part of the settlement, as indicating wrongdoing and a breach of the agreements that he had with Fox. Um, so that seems to be the nub of the disagreement, at least as it's been reported by Axios. Uh, a source told Axios Carlson was told by a senior Fox executive the network's goal is to keep him sidelined until 2025. Obviously, they want to keep him out until after the presidential elections. That's their goal. And they also have this note in here, which is kind of gross, that Tucker has been leveraging allies like former NFL quarterback Brett Favre <laughs> to put pressure on the network to let him out of his contract. OK. Yeah, I would say, Tuck, uh, let that one go. Um, get some yeah, better let's, friends. Dude. Let's not get Brett Favre involved in this one. Look, on the merits, it's ridiculous. I think this should be 100% illegal, that a company can basically sign you or voice away you know, for your likeness and then basically restrict your free speech rights. That's actually something that he is arguing, um, that his lawyers say, that effectively they're trying to silence him on all of social media and claiming that any of his communications are effectively in some way a threat to Fox and a violation of their agreement. Now. I will also say, until these are finally made illegal, let's just not go ahead and sign these deals because inside, you know, they even quote from some of the agreements that they have in here where, quote, pursuant to the agreement, Mr. Carlson's, quote, services shall be completely exclusive to Fox. That's a real issue because that could literally mean anything. And that, Crystal, this is exactly yeah. why you and I walk away from mainstream media and from corporate media is because they tried to ensnare you and I exactly in these same problems where, you know, it's ambiguous. You probably could win in court, but it becomes a total nightmare. And uh, yeah. look, by the way, from Fox's perspective, they're not wrong. This is a disaster. The show or his uh, Tucker on Twitter has 102.7 million views as of uh, this morning when we're looking at it. And it was just posted two days ago at 6 p.m. Now, of course, you know, Twitter views not necessarily analogous to the same type of view, but you know, you can't deny that it was seen and was distributed, at least in part, by a ton of people and had organic interest. So they at the same time, you know, their prime time is a disaster. They've lost over a million viewers overall. Their key demographic viewers have been a disaster. And if he truly was unchanged, you know, it would be a also a benefit to Twitter, um, especially if they can improve their overall video product. So I think this is gross um, that these types of agreements even exist in the first place. I think people should be allowed to speak. And the fact that they can drag his, you know, drag him through the mud basically for the next two years in an attempt to try and silence him through 2025, that's insane. You know, even if you don't like Tucker Carlson, like you should not be allowed to do this as a major corporation. Tucker is, as part of his argument, he's claiming Twitter is not a competitor to Fox. 
I think it's hard to make that case though. Um, to me, yeah. the stronger case is on the merits of like these non-competes shouldn't be a thing. Yes. Uh, potentially Fox violated some other aspects of his agreement. But given the reality of the media landscape today, I don't think you can really say that Twitter or Rumble or YouTube or podcasts or whatever are not a competitor to cable news. I mean, Tucker is certainly, I saw he sent out like some instructions for his older fans to try to figure out how to find the video on Twitter and how to be able to consume his show. Like he clearly sees the audience as that he's trying to reach as having a lot of overlap with the audience that he was reaching at Fox. And to me, I mean, the fact, listen, I want to take Tucker out of it because you all know I don't, I'm not a fan, but to me, the fact that that is the media landscape and that these are all competitive, you know, competitive outlets, one with another, I, I actually think that's a positive thing. I think it underscores the fact, Sagar, that we've been predicting, which is that cable news is not going to have these mm -hmm. big stars anymore, because why would you? Why would you, if you have the ability to generate this type of following and audience, why would you subject yourself to these types of onerous contract requirements than the dude who's going to tell you like to wear the sweater or, what, you know, all of the nonsense that comes with cable news and an incredibly limiting format. I mean, you know, the cable news format is so like stultifying and, um, you know, it's just just by the nature of the way the programming is done, it really limits what you're able to do. Why would you impose that type of top down control on your creativity um, and on the, the content that you as a performer want to put out? Like you just it doesn't make sense anymore. Now, if you're someone who's yeah. yeah, if you're someone who's like a company person and you're, you know, sort of like middle tier in terms of you can capably serve the news, but you're never going to be that person that generates a, a following based on your like charisma or the depth, depth of your knowledge or skill and presentation or whatever. OK, then cable news makes sense. Um, you know, this is a stable platform and a eyeballs and a paycheck and whatever, and you benefit from whoever's in the chair before you in the hour before, and you benefit from this huge um, cachet in terms that still exists in terms of American culture and what the elites are watching. Like that's a, then that's a proposition that makes sense. But increasingly for top talent, this is just not going to be where they uh, want to be. The other thing I was thinking about, Sagar, is you covered earlier this week, I guess the Rumble CEO uh, mm -hmm. complaining about the way that uh, Twitter community notes are done, which really got me thinking. I mean, the people who really stand to suffer from Tucker and uh, Daily Wire and others launching video on Twitter is Rumble. Um, That's you know, it's possible. a it's a real it's a real issue for them because they've positioned themselves as this free speech platform for video. And, you know, I don't think Elon Musk has any commitment to free speech. I think that's clearly demonstrated by his actions. But there's clearly an audience that does believe that Twitter has become a free speech platform. You've already got a huge network, tons of eyeballs there, way more than you have at Rumble, on Rumble at this point. So I think, you know, this is a problem for Fox News. It's a problem for MSNBC and CNN. We've documented that, you know, clearly. But I think it also is an issue for some of the uh, new media platforms that have tried to be the, you know, Twitter and other social media mm. competitors based on free speech principles. We'll see. Here's the reason why I wouldn't bet against Rumble, which is at the end of the day, Rumble is designed for video. And it's like Twitter is just not designed for video. Uh, and look, it's certainly possible they could turn it around, but I'm not sure. I can't be the only guy who got annoyed watching a 10 minute monologue on Twitter, you know, it's just not, it's not what the platform is designed to do. It doesn't pause properly. You can't come back to where you were. Uh, you can't see, you know, the area. If you accidentally scroll out of it, it takes up your whole screen. I mean, there's just so much about it where the functionality itself is not hardwired into the app. Now, can that change? Yes, it certainly can. How much of that is a priority to Twitter? I don't know. Are they gonna be actually investing resources into it. So if I were a rumble, I wouldn't be actually too worried about it because, you know, it's just, uh, uh, look, Elon would actually have to dedicate a ton of resources to make it a multifunctional app, given the fact that it, what it's currently worth, like one third of what he bought it for, you know, and fired the vast majority of the staff. We'll see. That's, that's my only thing. Pete, you know, I saw, this isn't, you know, this isn't just a, uh, to crap on Matt Walsh or whatever, but they were touting like how many people had watched <laughs> their documentary. And I was like, yeah, but do they really watch all of it? Like, is Twitter really the place you want to watch a 45 minute documentary? Like, I just, I don't know. And you know what you and I know, Crystal, is 
There's a big difference between a view and retention. And also one of the reasons why YouTube is so great is they don't recommend videos based upon the overall number of views. They recommend videos based on the amount of people actually staying and watching said video called the retention uh, analysis. If anything, that actually matters even more than your overall view count. That's what you and I look at, you know, in terms of oh, are yeah. people actually sitting and watching our stuff. I don't even care that necessarily about, about the views. We care much more about retention. And also they are, you know, have a real relationship. So that's something that also Twitter and also Rumble has that too, in terms of its, uh, you know, its recommendations and, and what exactly it prioritizes as well. There's just a difference between a video platform and then an overall like text-based platform designed to show you as much uh, info as possible. These yeah. are kind of hardwired. Those in. are, those are we'll fair see. points. Yeah. Those are fair okay. points. I mean, Rumble definitely has better uh, tech at this point, uh, you know, more intentional like mm -hmm. video geared tech. But Twitter definitely has more people um, and true. more more visibility. So I think that's kind of that's kind of the battle. But to your point, you know, take all of these view numbers for what is a woman or for Tucker Show mm -hmm. for anything, any of the Twitter video that you see posted. Take it with a lot of grains of salt because they count as a view if someone just scrolls by the tweet. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's not a view in any real sense of the word. And we've said this before, like even when we post videos, the numbers that you see of views that you see generated there are not really reflective of mm -hmm. much of anything meaningful. Now, I don't doubt a lot of people watch, definitely millions of people watched Tucker's monologue and his opening show. There's huge interest. There's obviously huge commentary about it, um, coverage of it, et cetera. But just like understand what the numbers actually mean. Yeah. Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now. And Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us. And if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.